If you walk into a bookstore today, you'll see dozens of options that deal with the topic of the mental lives of animals. In the comparative psychology literature, studies of animal cognition are also common. But one of the first and most influential contributions to this literature was The Animal Mind, a textbook of comparative psychology originally published in 1908 with subsequent editions in 1916, 1926, and 1936. The landmark book was written by Margaret Floyd Washburn, the first woman to earn a PhD in psychology. Margaret was born in 1871 to the Reverend Francis and Elizabeth Floyd Washburn of New York City. In her autobiography, published nine years before her death, Washburn reflected on her early life. There are progressive persons interested in educational theory who love to describe the defects of their own early training. But I seem to remember chiefly what was helpful in mine, so that, like Marcus Aurelius, I begin my meditations by thanking the gods for having given me nearly everything good. In 1891, Washburn earned degrees in chemistry and French from Vassar College. But her senior year, she took a course in psychology that would change her life and change the field of psychology itself. Writing about that time, at the end of my senior year, I had two dominant intellectual interests, science and philosophy. They seemed to be combined in what I heard of the wonderful new science of experimental psychology learning of the psychological laboratory just established at Columbia by Dr. Cattell, who had come a year before from the Fountainhead, the Leipzig laboratory, I determined to be his pupil. After Christmas, I was allowed to present myself to Dr. Cattell for admission as a hearer. What do you think is done in psychological laboratories? asked Dr. Cattell. I blessed the hours I had spent on Wilhelm Wundt's article. Instead of speaking, as I'm sure I was expected to, of hypnotism, telepathy, and spiritism, I referred to reaction time, complication experiments, and work on the Lyman's and Weber's law, and was rewarded by the remark that I seemed to have some knowledge of the matter. From that time, Dr. Cattell treated me as a regular student and required of me all that he required of the men. Writing further on the breadth of her training, Washburn noted, While I was thus being initiated into Cattell's objective version of the Leipzig Doctrine, the influence of William James's principles was strong. Knowing that Columbia would not grant admission for doctoral training to a woman, James McKean Cattell recommended that Washburn move upstate to Ithaca, New York, to study with Professor Edward Titchener at Cornell. Titchener welcomed this new disciple, and in 1894, Washburn became the first woman to complete a PhD in psychology. After a brief series of postdoctoral teaching positions, Dr. Washburn would settle at Vassar, where she would spend the last 34 years of her highly productive career. Among many accomplishments, in 1921, she served as president of the American Psychological Association, the second woman, after Mary Whitten Calkins, to be elected to that office. Distinguished both for outstanding teaching and scholarship, Dr. Washburn contributed many papers to the literature, but her most impactful publication was that 1908 textbook of comparative psychology with the provocative title, particularly coming as it did from a scholar trained at the bastion of structuralism, where introspection was the primary method of inquiry. Clearly establishing the animal mind's footing within the new scientific psychology, Dr. Washburn wrote in the preface, the title of this book might more appropriately, if not more concisely, have been the animal mind as deduced from experimental evidence. For the facts set forth in the following pages are very largely the results 
of the experimental method in comparative psychology. Thus many aspects of the animal mind, to the investigation of which experiment either has not yet been applied, or is perhaps not adapted, are left wholly unconsidered. This caveat notwithstanding, the author summarized the state of psychological science on a wide range of topics, including many that remain of interest in contemporary comparative cognition. The volume was also impressive with respect to the array of organisms included in the review, from the simplest animals like Paramecia to the primates. Dr. Washburn's critical review of animal behavior and the inferences that might be made from such research remains, even today, one of the most comprehensive and truly comparative treatments in history. But how is it that scientists can infer mental states about any non-human organism? Acknowledging this challenge, Dr. Washburn wrote, If my neighbor's mind is a mystery to me, how great is the mystery which looks out of the eyes of a dog, and how insoluble the problem presented by the mind of an invertebrate animal, an ant, or a spider. Dr. Washburn clarifies that this challenge is by no means unique to comparative psychological inquiry. Psychologists make the same inferences in studying the minds of humans, and all such inferences are grounded in empirically observable and objectively measurable behavior. All psychic interpretation of animal behavior must be on the analogy of human experience. Our acquaintance with the minds of animals rests upon the same basis as our acquaintance with the minds of our fellow man. Both are derived from observed behavior. The actions of our fellow man resemble our own and we therefore infer in them like subjective states to ours. The actions of animals represent ours less completely, but the difference is one of degree, not of kind. The facts are those of human and animal behavior, but the mental processes are just as justifiable as any others within which science deals. Clarifying the rigor and scholarly tentativeness required for all such inferences, Washburn wrote, Certain precautions are necessary when we infer the state of our neighbor's mind. Certain added precautions are necessary when we infer states in the mind of an animal, and our insertions should certainly diminish in dogmatism as we go down the scale of animal life. In his own classic comparative psychology book, which had been published the same year that Margaret Floyd Washburn was completing her PhD, British scientist C. Lloyd Morgan had articulated his famous principle of parsimony, now commonly known as Morgan's Canon. In no case may we interpret an action as the outcome of a higher psychical faculty, if it can be interpreted as the outcome of the exercise of one that stands lower in the psychological scale. Invoking this canon to encourage conservative interpretation of animal behavior, Dr. Washburn noted, the fact is that Lloyd Morgan's principle serves to counterbalance our most important source of error in interpreting animal behavior. It is like tipping a boat in one direction to compensate for the fact that someone is pulling the opposite gunwale. We must interpret the animal mind humanly if we are to interpret it at all. Yet we know that it differs from the human mind, and that the difference is partly a matter of complexity. Let us therefore take the least complex interpretation that the facts of animal behavior will admit, always remembering that we may be wrong in doing so, but resting assured that we are, upon the whole, on the safer side. For Professor Washburn, mind was defined by consciousness plus adaptive variability in behavior. Adaptivity and behavioral responding can be objectively observed. 
but consciousness of an organism, of any other organism, can only be inferred from their behaviors. On this point, Dr. Washburn argued, We know not where consciousness begins in the animal world. We know where it surely resides, in ourselves. We know where it exists beyond a reasonable doubt, in those animals of a structure resembling ours, which rapidly adapt themselves to the lessons of experience. Beyond this point, for all we know, it may exist in simpler and simpler forms until we reach the very lowest of living beings. Margaret Floyd Washburn was a remarkable psychologist, not merely for ceremonial reasons, such as being the first woman to earn a PhD in the discipline, but also because her scholarship would set the standard for comparative psychology for more than three decades of that history. Indeed, current students of comparative cognition would benefit from studying the animal mind and Washburn's other insightful discussions of topics like attention, motor behavior, and consciousness as viewed through the lens of experimental psychology.